we are running out of time, and I see that people here have questions, so uh, I'd like to give the word to the lady here in, in, the, in the white blazer, please. And please tell us whom you are addressing your question to. First, I'll tell you my name. My name is Mona Makram Abed. I'm an Egyptian senator and member of parliament. I'm addressing myself, as you can imagine, to Minister Arkebi. First of all, I want to re-congratulate you for the Nobel Prize that was awarded to your president and a well-deserved one. <laughs> My second point is that I'm very impressed by the advances that Ethiopia has made lately, whether it is in life expectancy and growth, etc. But there is one thing that I want to remind Ethiopia of, is that the Renaissance Dam is a great problem for both Egypt and Ethiopia. There must be more flexibility on your part. The president has taken the Nobel Prize because he brought peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea. I hope that the World Policy Forum will inspire him to find some solution, and it must be a political solution, because instability in Egypt means instability in the whole region. You know that better than I do. Thank you very much, and you know that the first congratulations came from President Sisi and from the Pope, because the Pope, the Coptic Orthodox Church, plays a very important role in Ethiopia and in Egypt. My second little point, not much, is to congratulate Minister Mezouar for everything he said. Et je voudrais vous, vous adresser la parole en français, comme vous l'avez fait, pour vous dire que moi aussi, je pense que la construction, euh, je suis très optimiste pour le Maghreb, mais surtout pour la construction maghrébine, qui a été prouvée par ce qui se passe en Algérie, et nous allons le voir de nouveau en Tunisie. Alors, je vous félicite pour avoir souligné les mutations structurelles qui sont véritablement porteurs d'espoir. Merci. Merci, madame. If, if I may reflect on this uh, important point, I greatly appreciate the suggestion mentioned by my sister from Egypt. Uh, I have been emphasizing about a win-win solution. This is a central concept our government is focused. The Grand Renaissance Dam, as you know, focuses on generation of hydropower. It doesn't affect the uh, use of water for other purposes. It only regulates. And from the very beginning, the Ethiopian government sees that Egyptian people should not be affected by uh, such a project. And our leaders are working on it. And I'm optimistic it's going to be uh, resolve it. Our destiny is mutually uh, cannot be excluded. Please. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Mubarak from Senegal. I'm the Director General of the Economic Prospective Bureau. I want to disagree with the disagreement of Mr. Tanaka regarding China. If you take the World Bank figure in 2017, the GDP per hit of China was 8,823. By growing 2.5% in 2003, 2030, it will be more than 13,000. So, and the World Bank defined high income country as 12,056. So I, I think Okibe is right. China will become a high income country in 2030. Secondly, on innovation also, I think it will catch up. Thank you. And at this point, let me maybe bring Olivier Planchard in because uh, I have sensed some disagreement as well. And that last word, uh, to know Kitanaka. Yeah, I, I, listening to the whole conversation, it's clearly essential to know whether China is going to go at 6% or 2% because it determines whether it's going to be a G2 or a G1.5. Mm -hmm. yes. And for Africa, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, more optimistic than Mr. Tanaka, although he has spent much more time thinking about China. My sense is indeed on population growth, there is no ambiguity. On capital, it's mostly domestic capital. So even if Hong Kong were to close, there is still a lot. And on innovation, my sense is actually China has achieved a level of uh, technological uh, sophistication 
which is such that they can have productivity mm -hmm. growth from there. So I think the 2% number is, is much too pessimistic. But it's clearly an essential number in terms of the interactions with Africa, the interactions with the US, and how we see the world. So, Noki, if you, if you, if you please briefly respond. Uh, rise of China, it's true. However, when we see the future course of Chinese economy, we, are very, we should be very careful. Uh, I am now picking up three animals and three colors. One is a gray rhinoceros. It's a accumulated debt, management of accumulated debt. Uh, when we see the rhinoceros in the zoo, uh, they, they are very stable. But when they get angry, it's very difficult to handle. So uh, that problem, accumulated debt problem is very important for China. Forbearance policies are now being done. Forbearance policy means uh, that's not the orientation of high growth. Uh, that's one problem. Second is a white elephant. So in the case of uh, investment by government sector, very in inefficient equipment, in very inf inefficient, inefficient uh, parts are being now produced. Uh, that would have the uh, bad effect upon the productivity increase in China. Third is a black swan. Uh, in China, uh, there is some kind of possibility of systemic risk. So uh, in the case of um, property management uh, in the rural levels, a lot of uh, foreign money came to China. So the finance problem is now being uh, uh, visited. So in the case of refinance of their bond in dollar terms, in some cases, they are uh, their coupon rate is 12% or 40% or 50%. So uh, in that case, uh, some kind of bankruptcies in development of properties may occur. That may become the allies of Black Swan. That's my understanding. Thank you very much, Naoki. Yes, I know there is uh, much more to be said uh, about all these important points that have been uh, floated here. I think that uh, Thierry de Montbrial has put me in charge here. He's, he thinks that I'm a German. He's actually wrong. I'm from Austria. But nonetheless, my task here is to watch over time. We are four minutes late. So for this reason, thank you very much for this panel for an excellent discussion. I hope you'll all be around for the next uh, days so we can continue this. Thank you very much. Thank you.